What's up guys, today's video, I'm going to be showing you some stuff on the S2000. So if you guys haven't seen, the S2000 looks incredible right now. True Auto Creations uh, helped with the wrap and got it all done and has it looking awesome. So we're supposed to hit a track day actually tomorrow as of the making of this video. And I'm still having a slight hesitation from the car. I've gone through just about everything. I've checked the TPS, the throttle position sensor. I've swapped out injectors, which is another common issue and pretty much checked everything. I checked the valve clearances, we're all good there. The only other thing that it's kind of, I've even swapped out the map sensor, so the manifold pressure sensor, which is you know somewhat common on these cars to go wrong, but one of the number one things is the coil packs. So interestingly enough, and I'll show you guys, I don't know what the history is on the car or the coil packs, they look kind of dated to be honest with you, but kind of a cool little thing, and I'll link everything in the description below, but these are Denso coil packs. And like I said, they don't look that new, right? Like you can see some plastic chipped off them, so probably have a quite a bit of miles on them at this point, and S2000s are known for coil packs going bad. So this one here, number three, when you put a multimeter across it and you check the ohm reading, this one here has a higher ohm reading, so it has more resistance for some reason. And in this box, I got two brand new Denso coil packs from Amazon. For some reason, I wanted to get all four, but they only shipped in quantities of two. So I don't know, it was some sort of weird restriction when I was ordering that at these times. So anyways, I have two in here. They're Denso, they're slightly different part number, but they work for this model and it's kind of a bit of an upgrade. I guess these ones, uh, a lot of people were having issues with it. So it's a newer part number, which I'll share with you guys in a second. But let me throw a multimeter on this. I'll show you guys quickly what I'm talking about as far as the resistance, then we'll open up the package, we'll see what resistance the brand new ones in the box show, and then we'll put it together, we'll test it, and I'll report whether it fixed it or not. So here's just a cheap multimeter, it's actually a free one from Harbor Freight. Um, we're gonna put it over here to the ohms, so make sure that you have your connectors in the ohms position here. So you can see a little ohm symbol, this little horseshoe and then common for common grounds, make sure that's there. So make sure it's not over at 10 AC or you won't get your reading for the ohms, which is on this. So I'm gonna set it to 2000 ohms. We're gonna turn it on obviously. So your meter might be slightly different, but this is a cheap one that you can check with what we're doing. So what I'm gonna do is see these left two pins. So if you situate your quote pack like this and you put this here, see the reading there? So 1231. So this one I'm gonna guess, see how it's coil pack number three? If you check the other coil packs, we're getting a lower resistance. Look, 1175, 1112 or 13, and 1117. So interestingly enough, I think the ones that are facing the issue are the ones that are towards the back of the engine. I don't know if it's because there's more heat back there or what have you, but anyways, that's the resistance. So like I said, for some reason, this one is showing a significant amount more resistance, which is the one that I'm thinking failed. So these ones are all in similar range with this one being a little bit higher but just as a last comparison for you guys, so this one has 1175. This one has 1232, it shows, whereas the rest of them are a little lower. So I'm gonna open up the box with the new ones and we're gonna check what the resistance is on those ones. Here's a box with a brand new one. I'll link these in the description below. I can't remember exactly, but they were cheap, you guys. So it's a Denso, it's an OEM brand or manufacturer, and they were about, I think under $40, which is pretty good, because there's a lot of no-name ones that you can get for around the same price. But anyways, we'll pop this open, and we'll see what we got. So here's the brand new one, Denso. As you can see, it looks identical, except new. So fresh out of the bag, let's see what the resistance is on this one. So same thing, the left two pins. Yeah, see? 
So 1106, 1105. So that's more in check with our other ones, not this 1200 reading that we're getting. So if I had to guess, I'm gonna say that this is the dead one. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap out, I bought two of them, you guys. I don't know how I should do this, what the proper test is. I don't know if I should swap out both of the higher reading ones and call that a fix or just swap out the really high one. See how this one's 1175? So I'm wondering whether just to swap out this one and try it or both of them. But uh, let me decide here and then uh, we'll get this thing started. Okay guys, in the essence of time, just since like I said, I have a track day tomorrow, I'm gonna go ahead and put in two new ones and I'm going to also remove this higher reading one like I was showing you. So the other one that was almost 1200, this is the other problem one I believe. There you go, 1175. We're gonna go ahead and replace this one as well. So we're gonna go ahead and put all four back in. They're just held in by a 10 mil bolt on the top. Clip them in, no big deal. And then we'll test this thing out. All right guys, she's all back together, pretty simple. Uh, I'm gonna take it for a test drive and see if hopefully that fixed it by replacing those two higher resistance coils. So, so far we've been driving it for about 15 minutes. I'm happy to report it is much smoother. So before, I don't know if you guys have been following along on my journey with this car, but when you would be driving at partial throttle and you would try to accelerate or just maintain speed, the car would be jerking. And not only that, but I kind of just assumed it was normal, but. Uh, I just got so used to it, I guess. But even when the car was like idling, now it feels so much smoother. So I've got a good idle. Don't worry about this. I know what this is. This is something else. Um, that's one of my O2 sensors, I believe. But anyways, as far as the actual car and the way it feels, so far I haven't got any hesitation, no jerking, no nothing. It's just smooth. But I'll keep driving it and I'll let you guys know if that changes. But so far, so good. I hope that this fixed it. Fingers crossed and the drama and there's drama <laughs> <laughs> we are stuck in some serious traffic i don't know what's going on Various. but i think there's some sort of fire up there so we shall see <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so much power now oh. <laughs> Not there all 240 horses <laughs> Okay guys, we're back and it is working perfectly. It didn't hesitate the whole time. I drove it for probably about half an hour, 40 minutes and didn't experience any hesitation. And even my idle, one thing I should probably mention to you guys is before my idle would hang really high, like 1500, sometimes two grand before it would finally settle down. And what I can think of is if the ignition, if it's misfiring, like if that coil pack's not firing, then there's gonna be unburnt fuel in the cylinder, which might lead to it you know, having more RPM. So anyways, it looks like it might be okay. Okay guys, so that's gonna be a wrap for the video. Uh, I'm gonna call it good, call it fixed, and I will keep you guys updated if anything changes, but this thing was driving very erratically before. Like I said, if you were cruising, just partial throttle, the thing was bucking back and forth, and sometimes the idle would hang up really high for a while and it would, wouldn't come down, it might not even come down for, you know, a given period of time. But now all that seems to have gone away. So I think that's a good method to check these coil packs. So you guys saw kind of the numbers that were on the those pins on my coil packs. So I would use that as a way to test it without just throwing money out the window. Um, like you saw, one of them was way off, one of them was a little bit off, so I replaced both of them. It may have just been that one only, but you could see that the other one was starting to drift off from spec as well. And you can also see that the brand new ones are even lower spec than the other two, or all of them as well. So uh, I might be due for two more soon, but um, that's about it, guys. If you guys found this helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. There's a lot more content on the way, and you guys can check out all the other content we already have on the build on all these vehicles that you guys see. So thanks for watching. See you on the next video.